What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzo with NeverState.com and kind of following the series that I've been doing, I'm gonna give you guys some deadlift finishers so you can deadlift until you're dead. The entire point of this entire finisher series is that, guys, by the time that I get to my assistance, I've already done my strength stuff, my volume stuff, tip some conditioning, I've usually done some strongman stuff, so when it comes to doing that little assistance work, uh, I kind of skip it. Or at least if you tell me to do four sets of 10 of stupid exercises, I'm probably gonna skip it. So for that reason with myself, with my athletes, with all the athletes that I write programs for around the world, I've been doing this and it's really seemed to help a lot of people get their assistance done without hating it so much, plus you get a little bit of conditioning and it's definitely more fun which means if you're anything like me, you'll actually, maybe, maybe you'll do it. Now I've already given you guys some squat assistance finishers and I've also given you guys some bench assistance finishers. So now it's time for the deadlifts. So I'm gonna give you four different ones. But the only thing I'll say that's different about the deadlift assistance finishers is that every single time that you do a heavy deadlift, your CNS gets affected. You can get away with a lot on the squat that you can't get away with on the deadlift. And as far as upper body lifts, your bench and your overhead press, yes, it takes some CNS, but nothing compared to like the squat and the deadlift. Now. You can get away with squatting a good bit. That's why a couple years ago there was that squat everyday program that didn't really work, but some people used it and got some, some stuff. If you tried that with deadlifts, you would die. The reason why is you need to think about every single heavy deadlift you do is like a video game life meter. Every single one just kind of ticks you down a little bit, right? And you can only do so many before that CNS is down so low that you become as weak as a kitten, which is never fun for anybody, at which time nothing's gonna solve it other than food and rest. So yeah, take that into consideration when you're throwing these into your program or however you're choosing to use these. Now people are always asking me how heavy should I go in assistance and that is going to be up to you because if you're anything like me and your strength work worked you and you're in a bad shape by the time that you're done your deadlifts a lot of times by the time of my strength work is done on my deadlifts I feel like like my pelvis is moved and not in a good spot anyway if that is you then you need to listen to your body and you need to do more technique work or get a pump or do whatever conversely if you guys think it was kind of hi doggies Oh, that's an excited baby. Anyway, if you guys get through like your medium strength work and you realize that maybe you're a little overcooked for that PR and those percentages, you could probably go a little bit heavier and you want to push a little bit more on your assistance work, then absolutely do that. Hammer those weak points so that when the testing comes around, you will absolutely shine. The first one that I want to talk about is going to be working the bottom of your deadlift. Now, to set this up, all they're going to need is one barbell and a clock and a rack, somewhere, someplace to rack that barbell. Now, as far as that clock goes, you're just going to set it for 30 second increments because you're going to do 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest, making it a two minute round. You're going to do five rounds of it, which is going to give you 10 total minutes to knock that assistance out. That is a heck of a lot better than four sets of 10 of stupid anything. But for that first exercise, what you're going to do is 30 seconds of front squats at whatever weight you're going to do. Now, some of you just heard 30 seconds of front squats and you almost died. 30 seconds of front squats means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. That could mean five reps for you. That could mean 20 reps. Whatever you're going to do as far as where you're going to work that day is up to you. Never ever neglect the benefit of front squats for the deadlift because if you have strong quads, it's a whole lot easier to break that inertia of the bar getting off the floor. So after you're done that, you're gonna throw the bar on your back, you're gonna step out for some good mornings with the safety pin set to the start of your deadlift height. Now for that, what I'm talking about is actually rolling up a deadlift bar and then getting into the start of your deadlift positioning with someone else helping you or you could do a lot of trial and error to get those safety pins set to exactly where that bar is gonna sit on your back in your good morning at the start of your deadlift. This is gonna do a ton to help your core, to help your stabilization, and putting your butt back, so you're gonna learn that bar path. A lot of things are gonna help you get built here, they're gonna help you break that bar off the floor in the future. As soon as you've done that, your next 30 seconds is gonna be the bent over row, or deadlift row, or whatever type of row that you can do with the same weight that you've been using, because you're not really switching up weights. Whatever you set for your front squat is the exact same thing you're gonna use for your good morning, it's the exact same thing you're gonna be using for your row. Remember, you're doing this for assistance, you're not trying to absolutely set PRs here. Your next 30 seconds, actually, so that is done is rest. So you have 90 seconds of work, 30 seconds of rest, five rounds of it, 10 minutes, that assistance is done. Plus, hopefully you're strong off the floor. The next assist finisher that I wanna talk about is gonna work your deadlift all together. It's gonna work your traps, your upper back, your grip. It's gonna work everything because you're gonna be doing the snatch grip deadlift. Now, if you guys want to go heavy on this, you can absolutely use straps and you'll still get benefit from this, but it does need to be heavy. If you don't wanna go heavy, you don't use straps and you're still gonna get a lot of added benefit, especially for your grip, because holding onto a snatch grip deadlift is extremely difficult. So whatever weight you choose, what I want you to do here is six snatch grip deadlifts, and then on the top of the six one, I want you to go into snatch grip shrugs. So you're not changing grip on the bar, you're not putting it down, you're going right into it. From there, I want you to do 12 shrugs, getting a good hold up top. I don't want you answering trigonometry. 
I actually want you to get a good hold and a good pause up top, and then once you're done those 12 reps, I want you to get 30 seconds of a holding. Now, if you are a beast, you can hold in a shrug position up top until that doesn't work anymore, and you'll fall down to the bottom. If you just want to hold at the top of the snatch grip deadlift position, you can absolutely do that. If you want to really torture yourself, what you can do is take that bar position and drop it down to about three inches below your knee, and hold that for 30 seconds. Once you've done that, I want you to drop into one minute RKC plank. Now what an RKC plank is, is a Russian kettlebell plank, and all that you're gonna be doing is holding a regular plank position, except when I hold a plank position, I am trying to get as much air in my belly and then brace it down just as if I was doing a squat, a deadlift, a front squat, anything like that. Now obviously I know you're not gonna be able to hold that for a minute. So what I want you to do is hold that brace as long as you possibly can, and then release it, and then hold it and release it, and so on and so forth. Anyway, the RKC plank, the difference of it is that when you're in that plank position, you're trying to pull your toes towards your face like you're trying to tuck your tailbone, like your butt bone underneath your body while you're trying to pull your elbows down towards your feet and your rib cage down towards, you're trying to curl that down. So all while breathing and braced, you're trying to do all that motion just exactly like you're gonna be locked into a front squat. Once you've done that, take as much rest as you need, get back into it. I'd probably do three to four rounds of this, but I wouldn't do much more than it would take you to do like 10, 12 minutes, which should be about three to four. Rounds. All right, so for the next one, you're gonna need a deadlift bar and you're gonna need a clock. This one is going to work your lungs, it's gonna work your grip, and it's gonna work your soul. If I only had 10 minutes to do a workout in a day. If I was super busy and I was like, I only have 10 minutes today to do something, I would do this and I'll be sore for days, all right? So all you're gonna do is load up on the bar, probably about like, let's say 40 to 60% of your one rep maximum deadlift. I usually throw something like 315 to 365 on the bar. Now, in front of the clock, when it hits minute one, I do two deadlifts. And then I stare stupidly at the clock waiting for the rest of the minute. When minute two rolls around, I do four deadlifts. And then I stare at the clock. Minute three, I do six. Minute four, I do eight. I continue to do this until I can no longer keep up the clock or until I get to about 10 minutes. If you do more than 10 minutes, you probably went a little bit too light or there's something wrong inside your head. But the way this usually plays out is minute one, you did two deadlifts. Minute two, you did four deadlifts and you're literally going, this is stupid. Minute three, you hit six deadlifts. You're still kind of like, this is stupid. Minute four, you hit eight deadlifts and you're kind of like, you know that minute's starting to shrink a little bit. The next one, you have 10 deadlifts. Once you hit that 10 deadlifts, you start looking that minute go, okay, that took me about half a minute to get those done. That's about half a minute to rest. What's gonna happen? And then suddenly you're going, right? Now, you have 12 deadlifts here. Now, 12 deadlifts in a minute is a lot of deadlifts in a minute, but it's especially a lot of deadlifts in a minute when you just did 10, and you know in less than 30 seconds you have 14. So you finish that up, you know 14's coming, and you answer the call. You go out to 14, Whatever happens after that is completely up to you. How sadistic you get, how much you want it, whatever you're gonna do, what, just again, remember, it's a life meter on a video game, people. Don't throw yourself down to the dirt, and if you are already in the dirt, the best thing to do is stop digging. I forgot to include this earlier, but if you guys really hate your life, do these with Rubik's deadlifts. I don't really know actually what these are called. You're doing a deadlift on a 45 degree back race. However, Pete Rubik's was the first guy that I saw do them, and I see them referred to as Rubik's deadlifts since then, so, Congratulations, Pete, you got yourself a deadlift. Anyway, you want to carry your hamstrings and your butt hamstring tie-in. Do the same exact drill, except with the Rubik's deadlift. You're welcome. And then the final deadlift assistance finisher that I want to talk about is nothing more than a deadlift medley. Now, this is something that we do in strongman competitions all of the time. What it's standard goes is you have a 60-second time limit, you have three deadlift bars set up or three different deadlift variations set up, and you do one heavy deadlift at like 85 to 90% another heavy deadlift variation at like 85 to 90%. Then you have a third deadlift variation that is somewhere to like 75 to 80% of your one rep maximum and you're going to spend the rest of the minute repping that one out as many times as you possibly can. Now, whatever you choose to do here is up to you. If you're much like our gym, you have a lot of different bars and a lot of space, you can throw up anything you want. You could do an axle to a trap bar to a regular barbell. But I know a lot of people don't have that kind of access and a lot of people don't have a lot of different bars that they're able to use. So you guys can even use it with changing up from sumo deadlift to stiff legged deadlift to conventional deadlift. Or you could do a raised deadlift on top of bumper plates to a regular floor deadlift to a deficit deadlift simply by stepping onto the plates and changing, manipulating the height as you go. There are a lot of different things that you're able to do. You could throw in a trap bar, you could throw in dumbbells, you can raise heights, lower heights, change things however you want. But guys, throwing things into a competition like that, and if you guys have friends and training partners, it is an absolute great way to finish off your workout with competing with your friends, 
get a little friendly competition going, you can only get better by pushing each other like that. And even if you don't have any friends, you're very much like me and you need to work on the social skills, you can still push yourself because you're able to go in there and fight against yourself because you're only as good as your last round. So I might do three rounds of this with two minutes of rest between, you hit the one, you know, that's one minute. I have two minute rest, there's another minute, two minute rest, one minute, it's not even 10 minutes worth of work. And trust me, you will get absolutely smoked. You get to compete, you're gonna have fun with it, and you get to actually be athletic for the day. Anyway guys, I know a lot of you already understand that this is intentionally made for you guys to throw these into that free dark horse program that I put out, because I know a lot of you are having trouble programming it on your own, so I'm trying to give you guys as many tools as I possibly can, all right? Uh, but if you are not doing a dark horse program and you're just looking for an interesting way to do assistance, or you're absolutely sick of whatever you're doing and you just want to try new challenges, Definitely go ahead and do that, and your assistance is a great time to kind of mess around with different things because you can't really go wrong. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, too many of us end up skipping that assistance because four sets of 10 of Paul's deadlift is about as cool as cancer. I thank you guys so much for the time and the attention and just everything you guys do to support the channel. If you guys are new here and you did subscribe, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. That gets me so excited. I have no idea why, but it does, and I thank you so much for it. I will catch up with you guys later in the week, but until I do, go out to something amazing with people keep working hard do something wait it's bad it's bad it's yeah we do something major olu what what how do i sign on my videos keep keep working hard keep uh, go out do something amazing in your lives keep working hard i can't remember it you said it like i know i <laughs> so i will catch up with you later week but until next time go out do something amazing in your lives keep working hard people be nice to each other we should have known that. We should have known that. <laughs>